Every month, tons of weird stuff happens in the gaming world, and every month we like to spend some time rounding up those stories. I'm Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, weird gaming stories of December 2017. Number 10, Elon Musk, who happens to be a very, very rich man. And he's rich because he spends almost all of his time doing various things, making electric cars, rooting around underground, trying to fly through space. He recently tweeted a message at John Carmack of Doom fame that seems like it was supposed to be private because it contains his cell phone number. Now he deleted it fairly quick, but obviously with 16.7 million Twitter followers, it doesn't matter if he deleted it quick. That phone number is out. So obviously people tried to call Elon Musk. Obviously Elon doesn't pick up, but that God of War Easter egg message, the one where the phone number was hidden in the game and if you called it, Kratos said something to you. Uh, that's what does pick up? So it's not clear if it was a prank. Like he made it look like he accidentally released his cell phone number and hooked it up to the God of War message or is covering his tracks by simply making it so that his cell number has a God of War message. Number nine, it's very difficult to stream actual TV shows. Some people try to do it. They'll hook up their capture card to some TV show that's on live and put it on Twitch or something. But you don't really have a lot of people boldly just stream, say, a pay-per-view UFC match. So a gentleman by the name of AJ Lester thought, you know what, there's a good way to do this. He used his gaming setup to act as if the UFC match was a video game he was playing. Not only is this hilarious, but it is brilliant. I don't know how many donations this guy got or if he got donations, but if I were him, I wouldn't publicly say anything about that. It got a lot of attention. A tweet with a clip of him, 63,000 retweets. You nailed it, Lester. Number eight, somebody released a game called Normal Human Face Simulator. Now with a name like that, you know nothing's normal about it. You don't even need to think. But here's the deal. It's a competitive game in which there is skin, muscles, and bones that the object is to bite the other person's face off. And it's truly the most batshit crazy game you're gonna play. One of the features listed is gratifying chewing noises. I'll just read what it says here. Challenge your friend to this local two-player face biting simulation. Chew their face off while they yours. No bath salt needed. You remember the bath salt thing where people went crazy from the bath salts? There was an Always Sunny episode about it. I guess kind of about it anyway. Number seven, the World Health Organization has categorized a disorder where one might be addicted to video games and they've called it gaming disorder. <laughs> I'm sorry, that I find that funny. This comes after a decade of study, but they've decided to classify that people who prioritize gaming over the rest of their life, over other life interests, over family, over friends, etc., have a mental health condition. The WHO says that people who have this disease will continue to game even if it leads to negative consequences, which I guess makes sense if somebody had like somebody sawing off their foot and they were like, I'm gonna finish this game. It probably wouldn't be mentally healthy to continue playing the game. Number six, we talked about this in another video. A team of seniors started getting attention as the oldest team playing Counter-Strike. They're called the Silver Snipers and are all at very least 60 years old. The team talks about how it's great mental exercise and they've even sparked some discussions about possibly having senior tiers in leagues or even senior leagues. Number five, a 23-year-old college dropout is now the owner of the Los Angeles Valiant, a $20 million team. They'll be competing in Blizzard's Overwatch League. Blizzard's raised over $240 million just in people buying franchises for the Overwatch League. And frankly, it seems a lot like this is becoming a big thing. In 2017, esports was worth $1.5 billion. And the two biggest movers of the year were the Overwatch League and PUBG. Number four, a documentary team called No Clip made a documentary about Horizon Zero Dawn, chronicling the game developers' development themselves. They were also the developer behind Killzone 2, and if you recall, the trailer for Killzone 2 caused a little bit of controversy. It was sold as a real game, for one, and it wasn't. It was really just internal footage that was meant to sort of inspire the team to understand what was possible this generation. They didn't even intend to show it publicly, at least according to the people working there that were featured in the documentary. And when it was shown at E3, they were like, oh 
Oh no, now we have to do something that's close to this. Now this is interesting because in 2008 they said the opposite, that it was literally just footage they develop on PlayStation 3, but they didn't even have a PlayStation 3 development kit until days before that E3. So that's them on record contradicting the official account. Number three, Tencent vows that PUBG will align with socialist core values when it's officially released in China. You know, because the core values of China really match up with socialism on paper. Tencent, the massive corporation, will release the game to China in order to profit, which sounds a lot like socialism to me. What I'm saying is that China's self-image is a little bit nonsense. China apparently has more Steam users than any other country out there, and it's in no small part because of PUBG. And it's not even officially released there. Number two, Peppy the Frog emoticons have been removed from the Steam marketplace because of a DMCA takedown notice from the creator. Matt Fury does not like where that meme has gone. Understandable. I, I get it. But this is not a good way for you to get, like, people not to attack you. I guarantee you this guy is getting attacked. But at the same time, it is a lot of people using his property in a manner where they make money and he doesn't make money. So I get it from that perspective. As much as I get it from the maybe he doesn't like what they're doing with it perspective as well. I mean, it is his stuff. So it's hard for me to get too angry about it. And finally, number one, Carl Jobst broke the 1990s GoldenEye 007 video game world record for beating the damn level in 52 seconds. The previous record was 53 seconds, and it was set by Brian Bosshart back in 2002. It took him 250 hours to break this record, but quite frankly, that's an accomplishment. GoldenEye 007 was a hell of a game. It's a game I spent a ton of time on and have never gotten anywhere close to that time. Good on you, Carl Jopes. That is not just weird, that is badass. What's the weirdest gaming thing you heard of this past month? Leave us a comment, and if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed now, it'd be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.